Wait a second. So if that comes after that, and that's before that, and that's what I think it is, and that's what I think it is, then that means... Oh. <laughs> We got titles! We got titles, people! As shown over on the Cartoon Network Scheduling Archive Twitter account, the remaining eight titles for Steven Universe Future's last episodes are now confirmed and out in the open for the public to see. And if you've been keeping up with my videos, you can guess that I'm liking the looks of some of these. Since we got some time before the next premiere, I think it's time for me to do what I do and predict exactly what the descriptions and possible plots of these episodes might be. And also talk about the two of them that already have descriptions because why not? As usual, what I say is not fact, it's just my predictions. And if you don't want to know anything about the future episodes, including titles, descriptions, and even a few leaks, here's a spoiler warning for you right now. For everyone else, here we go. First up we have Together Forever. Connie has a very clear vision of her future, and Steven wants to make sure he's a part of it. Now I will admit, after seeing Bismuth Casual, the concept of this episode did confuse me a little bit. In that episode, Steven was concerned that him and Connie were drifting apart due to her schooling, her new friends, and her new life. But after a motivational speech from Bismuth, he skated right up to Connie and spilled his feelings all over the floor, leading to a really sweet moment between the two of them involving Stevani, a pop song, and some topics of conversation that allowed Steven to bond with Connie's friends. There, perfect. A story that directly addresses one of Steven's underlying mental concerns, it gave him some confirmation that his worries were not needed, and it even opened up a gate of opportunity for Steven to still be a part of Connie's life. In spite of its fillery nature, this episode served a huge purpose and did it well. But now we have Together Forever, and based on a certain audio leak which is more than likely going to come from here, Steven actually proposes to Connie and suggests that they form Stevani forever. They can exist as a permafusion, kind of like Garnet. But Connie refuses, saying that she wants to live her own life, and Steven should too. Now as a general concept, this doesn't sound like a bad idea. It can even be seen as kind of relatable, since young people make impulsive decisions with things like marriage all the time. But from a character standpoint, I have several questions. I mean, literally one episode ago, Steven got confirmation that Connie is still his best friend and will never leave him. He brought new conversations to the table and bonded with Connie's friends over stuff like mommy issues, showing that he can even be a part of her life's new elements. Heck, the duo freaking fuse together, and fusion can't happen unless the two beings are in perfect sync with one another. How much more proof does this kid need that Connie will always be his BFF? But to be fair, the episode hasn't even aired yet. Maybe something new will come up that rekindles his fears. Maybe his meetups with Connie will become more and more sparse, making that little bit of confirmation start to fade with time. Maybe he'll get news that she got to skip a few grades due to her impressive marks, and can actually go straight to college early, which really concerns Steven. I mean, she's been away for stuff like Space Camp before, but never a period as long as four years. And if the suspect's breaking up out of nowhere is any indication, this series is no stranger to having things change in the blink of an eye. Overall, I'm cautiously optimistic about this episode, but what they do with the full 11 minutes is still a mystery to me. Maybe some cute romantic shenanigans that go horribly wrong, maybe some Stevani bonding moments that go horribly wrong, maybe Steven will ruin the date himself, maybe someone else will arrive and mess everything up, maybe everything will be perfectly fine and it'll just be a mutual understanding that getting married this early is a bad idea, but I just hope that the development from Bismuth Casual doesn't get completely forgotten, because that was good stuff. Also, quick word about this little promo we got a few days ago. People have been saying that this looks like Ruby and Sapphire are going to be cowboys together, a la Ruby Rider, but I know that had a neckerchief style all too well, and I'm going to say that Garnet is a master of some kind of scouting program. I'll bet she put together a troop of gems that want to learn more about how fusion works, and she's going to take them through a program led by Ruby, Sapphire, and herself, which includes all the basics of fusion. Sure, she could just show them the Classroom Gems episode about fusion, but eh, boot camp will be more fun. Right after that, we have number two, Growing Pains. Steven sees a doctor for the first time. You happy now, SU fanbase? After all this time, Steven is finally going to see a doctor. Hopefully, he'll get the therapy and emotional solace that he really needs right now. But based on these two quick shots from the Future Returns trailer, this might be easier said than done. This moment of Steven falling out of a chair in a hospital gown is more than likely going to make an appearance here, and in this little montage of traumatic events from the previous series, he seems to be wearing the exact same gown. Throw in the fact that this comes after a supposed botched date with Connie, and the sequence of events is pretty easy to predict. 
I'm gonna guess that Connie will check in on Steven, saying that she's worried about him after what happened on their date. Steven will try to assure her that it's nothing to worry about, yet his ripped clothing and pink form will convince her otherwise. She suggests that Steven go and see a doctor for a checkup, which is something he's not exactly used to, but he goes along with it anyway. Connie pencils Steven in for an appointment with Mrs. Maheshwarin, who at first is a little confused since she's not exactly versed in intergalactic gem health, but when it's explained to her that Steven's powers are tied to his real human emotions, she thinks that psychology might be the best approach, and sets him up in a private room so she'll be safe but can still talk to him. Then I imagine the rest of the episode goes very similarly to the episode The Guru from Avatar The Last Airbender, a bit of a clip show episode showing Steven trying to get past some mental blocks and barriers of his. The doctors would ask him questions and tell him to recall past events, in an attempt to try and get to the root of the problem. But as everything continues to flood in, it eventually becomes way too much for Steven. He goes all pink again, leading to some destruction, and in the end he figures that this whole thing is just a waste of time. Connie tries to convince him that it's going to take more than just one visit to solve his problem, but Steven doesn't want to take the risk of hurting more people, so he decides to try and handle it himself instead. Considering how creative the Crooniverse got with In Dreams and all the things they could do with Steven's nightmares, imagine a therapy session where we get memories of past episodes retold through the warped mind of Steven, looking through his eyes as he reflects on these events with fear or anger or sadness, trying his best to stay in one piece but eventually becoming overwhelmed by everything hitting him all at once. Poor kid, even therapy can't help him at this point. Looks like there's only one man who'll be able to solve his problems now, and his name is Mr. Universe! I know I'm not that tall. I know I'm not that smart. But let me drive my van into your- Yup, let's talk about the episodes with no description as of writing this, starting of course with Mr. Universe. Now my hopes are actually extremely high for this one, because if that title gives me any tells, this is gonna involve Greg in some way, shape, or form. And I love everything about this guy. Like how hard he tries to be a good father even in situations with people and things that are so alien to him. Literally. As I've mentioned before, I think Greg's two cents on this whole ordeal are long overdue. And this might just be the episode which lets him speak his mind. I imagine Greg taking Steven to a nice, isolated location. Away from the drama, away from the reminders of his old life. Just keep everything chill. Everything's chill! Steven would still be really upset considering all that's happened, but Greg would actually come to him with the story he could relate to. And that story would involve Greg during his own teenage years, dealing with similar feelings and concerns. We know from Jem Harvest that when Greg was young, he up and left his family after dropping out of college to pursue his solo music career. And if Andy's ramblings are any indication, he came from an extremely family-oriented household, likely with a lot of traditions in place and very little changing for most of his life. But maybe when he reaches his teenage years, people start leaving, friends start moving on, and Greg began to feel like everything was slowly falling out of place. He went through his own stages of teenage worry and angst, maybe resenting some members of his family or questioning where his life is really going at that point. But when he came to the decision to finally look forward instead of backward, something that Steven still needs to figure out, he wound up with the life that got him everything he could have asked for. Steven might ask Greg if he has any regrets over his life choices, and he could say that he did have a few. He regrets just leaving his whole family on a sour note and not really staying in contact with any of them. But thanks to encounters with people like Andy, maybe he decided to get back in touch with some of them since then. He might regret allowing Steven to go on a lot of these gem-based space adventures, thinking it might be his fault that his pink powers are acting up in the first place. But Steven himself reassures Greg that the gem stuff was important to keep the planet safe, and that he shouldn't feel bad about it. In the end though, Greg would tell Steven that at some point he is gonna have to look forward and just let things happen. If there is someone who he truly loves and doesn't want to lose them, they'll find a way to remain in contact. But he can't just expect everything to stay the same all the time. The day Greg looked forward was the day Mr. DeMeo became Mr. Universe, hence the title. And while it might be hard, one day Steven is gonna have to do the same. Steven says that he does feel a little bit better and Greg drives them both home. Steven takes a nap in the back seat, a little tired from all that emotion. But after another nightmare, he starts to relapse and forms a diamond dome shield in his sleep, leading to him accidentally crushing the van with Greg inside. He's able to snap out of it just in time, but Greg is badly injured and the van is pretty much total, leading to Steven having to walk him home. At the moment, the oldest memory that we have of Greg is his concert on the beach that only Rose attended 
we don't know much about his old family life or his origins outside of that. And I think this would be the perfect opportunity to see just how much Greg can relate to his son on a personal, emotional, and human level. Give us one last Greg backstory like the good old days, complete with an opening song courtesy of the big man himself. Those used to be some of my favorite episodes of the show. And with how many nostalgia bombs the show has already dropped, what's one more, right? I've got my gear on, I can handle it. <laughs> and now we have easily the vaguest of them all, Fragment. Just fragments. What does that mean? Fragments of a gem? Fragments of memory? Fragments of sanity? Like, what do you mean fragments? Well, vagueness is just an open window for more assumptions, I guess. And if you ask me, fragments is more than likely going to be the Jasper-centric episode I've been hoping for. It'll start with the Crystal Gems talking to Steven about how his powers are getting out of control, and referencing how he crushed the van with Greg inside last episode, basically including everything we saw in that first audio leak a while ago. But he's clearly fed up with trying to talk these problems out or control them. He's tried that many times with many kinds of people, and none of them have done anything. So you know what? Fine, if these powers are never going to leave him alone, he'll just embrace them. Let the anger flow, punch it in the face, let it all out instead of holding it in. He'd head into the forest like in the first episode and just start punching down trees. Jasper would eventually catch wind of this and ask what he's doing. He'd say that he doesn't want to talk anymore. He just wants to hit something. And now he's speaking Jasper's language. She'd push Steven to knock down more stuff, run even faster, hit even harder, show those puny earth creatures who's boss. It would eventually escalate to another fight between the two of them. But after letting his anger build for that long, he's not as cautious and quick to stop as he was last time. This leads to a powerful blow that not only ends up poofing Jasper, but when the smoke clears and Steven gets a good look at her gem, he sees that he actually cracked her, leaving the gem in fragments. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! After this, he either heals her gem completely and quickly brings her inside the house, keeping her safe while she reforms, but also hiding her gem out of shame. Or maybe being Pink Steven for that long kind of messed with his healing powers and he's unable to heal her on the spot. So he brings her back inside the house to try and find another solution. This one's the hardest to predict since the title is so vague, but a ton of scenes in the Returns trailer just scream Jasper Returns to me. And out of all the revealed titles, this seems like the most likely place for her to make a comeback. For the next two titles, Homeworld Bound and Everything's Fine, I'm gonna be really brief. The concept of being homeward bound means that you're oriented towards home, aka heading home. So my guess is that this will be the episode where Steven travels to homeworld. Why spend an episode traveling when he has a very convenient warp pad? Well, you'll see why in a sec. So before the end of Fragments, the gem sees Steven run straight through the door as he makes a mad dash for the homeworld warp. He notices that it's not working and decides to go for plan B. He runs up to Lion telling him not to move from that spot as he jumps through his mane. Lion's perfectly okay with that as he just goes back to his nap. The gems are unable to follow him since only Steven can get through Lion's mane, and he ends up back on the Sun Incinerator. This marks the beginning of Homeworld Bound, where we'll hopefully get to see Lars of the Stars and hear the off speak one last time. I don't think the entire episode would just take place in space, which is why I think this would be an opportune time to have Spinel as the one who greets Steven when he first arrives. They could catch up, talk about what's changed, and have a good old time together. But as soon as Steven brings up the diamonds, Spinel's mood immediately shifts from happy to nervous. She tries to get Steven to leave, saying it was great to see him again, but he's probably got a lot of stuff, and she's got a lot of stuff too, so bye! But Steven actually asks to see the diamonds, and she says that's probably not the best idea. He's very persistent though, and marches straight up to the throne room. The first thing he sees is the homeworld warp pad smashed to pieces. Pan up to show the diamonds sitting in their thrones, they all glare daggers at Steven, and next episode! Everything's Fine is obviously meant to be a very painfully ironic title, because at this point in the story, nothing is fine. Steven's already messed up a lot of things. Scaring Connie, injuring Greg, poofing Jasper, etc. And I imagine things with the diamonds aren't going to go much better. He'd likely get an earful from all the diamonds as they let their emotions fly. He never bothered to visit them after he got their essence bottles. They checked the warp pad for months, but he never came. One day they just got fed up with waiting and smashed the homeworld warp to bits, and they kept it there as a reminder of how much he hurt them. Steven might try to apologize or even fight back with his pink anger, but it all eventually ends with Steven just leaving homeworld altogether and returning back home, ashamed and devastated by what he did to them. 
And then we get the most self-explanatory title of the bunch, I Am My Monster. Yeah, I can just hear the Stephen Corruption theorist dancing with delight right now. I'm pretty sure this will be the episode where Stephen finally takes on the form of that gigantic worm creature that's been taunting us in the intro for so long. He'll realize that even though he's not his mom, his actions have been slowly starting to mirror her as time goes on, hurting those he loves, not taking others' feelings into consideration, being dishonest about his own current state, and it leads to him realizing how much of a monster he's been to everyone. He self-corrupts and or transforms after this terrifying realization, and then either goes into self-isolation or goes on a rampage. And then finally, in the last episode, The Future, we get the final battle against Corrupted Steven as well as everyone he's befriended over the years coming together to help him come back to reality. And then maybe we'll get a nice little epilogue showing where Steven eventually ends up after all is said and done. The future's future, if you will. I don't know what to say, guys. After these next 8 episodes, this is it. This is all the Steven Universe we're gonna get as far as TV is concerned. Heck, I even saw a farewell video on Cartoon Network's YouTube channel a while back. So yeah, this is gonna be it. It's gonna be a really bittersweet goodbye when the day finally comes, I'm sure. But for now, let's try to keep our minds open, our hearts full, and our eyes dry. Cause trust me, it's probably not gonna stay that way for long. Here I am with my tissues. Well, that's all I've got for you today. Tell me what kinds of ideas these titles gave you, and subscribe for more Steven Universe and cartoon content coming up. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and I hope to see you all real soon.